Hi everybody and welcome to today's presentation about limited and excess reactions. So in stoichiometry what you would have seen in the past is basically um, whenever we have information about one reactant or one product we can use that mole in order to find all the rest of it. So normally what we have is a situation where if you have one mole of this okay then you can uh, relate that to B so relate A to B to find the mole of B, okay? Or you can find the mole of C, you can find the mole of D, okay? What you're assuming here is you're, you are assuming that all of this is converted, that the reaction is 100%, otherwise you cannot use stoic. And another thing that you're assuming is that the amount of B is not going to run out, okay? that A will have B to react with and therefore the reaction can go forward. Okay, so what we generally look at in chemistry, because life isn't that pretty, you know, we have our reactions not being completely uh, mixed in the right ratios at the very beginning. So sometimes you may have a little bit more of A than you have B. And therefore, once the one that's lacking once B, for instance, in this case, once B runs out, the equation is no longer possible because what you require is you require A to interact with B in order to produce C and D. So basically, they both have to be there. Okay, so what we do is we need to learn how to figure out which one's limiting. So limiting is the one that's going to be um, the smaller amount smaller value so maybe it's just less of it that you have whereas the excess is the one that's in too much okay so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be investigating how to work out which one's limited which one is excess okay so the way you do this is first of all you have to work with the mole okay so say but firstly let's just say the numbers in front of you change Okay, and say we have um, the mole of A, so the mole of A could be, um, let's just make it really easy, 2 mole, and the mole of B, let's say it is um, equal to uh, 4 mole. Okay, so you're in a chemistry lab and you basically don't know how how to mix them so obviously this is a more realistic situation where you probably have limited of something and excess of something else okay but let's see so you have the first step is to get the mole of everything even before that actually the first step would be to balance the equation to ensure that all the coefficients in front of these numbers are proper okay the, the next step is to help make sure that you have the correct amount of mole Okay, and after you get that, this is, um, so that was the first step to balance the reaction. The second step is to obtain the mole. The third step is something strange. You may have not seen this before, but what we do is we get something called the mole coefficient ratio. So the mole coefficient ratio is that you get the mole of A, and then basically you divide it by its coefficient, and the coefficient is 2 in this case, because that's the number in front of A. Alright, and then you do the same for B. So you get the mole of B, and then you divide it by its coefficient, so the coefficient is 3 in this case. Okay, and this is just a technique just to be able to work out which one is limited and which one is excess. You do not use a stoichiometry with these values. Okay, and coefs don't use stoic. Um, refer back to the original values. We'll look at that soon. Okay, so if we do this now, we've got the mole of A. So we just need to put 2 divided by 2. And finally, that's just going to give you 1. Whereas if we do the same for this one, you get 4 divided by 3, which will give you um, 1.333 recurring. So, now, uh, the purpose of the NCOF ratio is to work out um, which number is bigger, which number is smaller. Obviously now you can tell that this number is smaller, this number is larger. So, what that tells us is the smaller one is limited, 
and the bigger one is excess. So what we've now figured out is that this one, whoops, my pen doesn't work. Sorry about that. Okay, um, that one is uh, going to be limited, and that one is excess. So that is how you work out which one is limited and which one is excess by referring to the NCOF ratios. Okay? So in the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how to use stoichiometry with the same example, but I've just broken it down into a few videos. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope you've learned something. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.